<laughs> Hola. Thank you so much to the people of Chile for inviting me here to talk about this NASA space mission. I want to start today by showing you a video that is a video that will introduce you to the team. Because I can stand here, but I don't know everything. It's the team. It's a shame, but living in the city, very rarely do you get to see stars. I feel like I have a, a new connection to them in a way that I haven't before. If I'm out in the desert and I look up at the sky, you just see millions and millions of places that we should be going. It's almost baked into our DNA, the desire to go and explore, right? That's the whole reason why we left the forest and then traveled across oceans, just to see what's out there. I was born in 1969, which is the year we landed on the moon. So I am a space baby. When I was a kid, there were guys driving cars on the moon. They're driving cars on the moon. I, that's so cool, right? I want to do that. All the rocky planets that we know of all have got a metal core in their center. And especially for the Earth, it's the source of our magnetic field. But we don't know a lot about our core. What we've learned about it, we learn indirectly, because we can't go there. It's too hot, the pressure's too high, our instruments would melt. Can't drill a hole that deep in the Earth or other planets. It turns out we can study a planetary core out in space because there's this one object, this one object called Psyche. 16 Psyche is an asteroid that orbits the sun out between Mars and Jupiter. It is the only asteroid that we're aware of that is 95% metal or more and is really huge. It's about 200 kilometers across in one axis. So it's about the size of Massachusetts. It's believed that it may be a remnant core of an early planetesimal that was formed in the very, very earliest parts of the formation of the solar system. And after this planet started forming and this metal core formed inside of that, it collided with other bodies that then stripped off the rocky mantle, leaving this core in place. The first thing that came actually was the theory. Some people from Jet Propulsion Laboratory contacted me and said, we would like to plan a mission that would test your hypotheses. And that starts you down a road that takes years. So we wrote a proposal to send a, a NASA spacecraft to visit this, this big ball of metal. And then uh, about a year ago, Lindy gets a phone call. You win. <laughs> and then we're all like, oh my god, now we have to do it. Psyche gives us the opportunity to visit a core, the only way that humankind can ever do. And it would be the first metal object that humankind has ever visited. We've been approved to go in August of 2022. So we talked with our mission design and navigation team, and in fact, they were able to come up with what is probably the most optimal trajectory, doing a Mars flyby. Flies past Mars, gives us a gravity assist, uses that propulsion system to then slowly creep up toward the end of 2025, getting there in, uh, in early 2026. SSL is building the solar electric propulsion chassis. When we do the mechanical, physical integration of each instrument on the spacecraft, we'll work hand in hand with each of the providers to get out to Psyche and do a full discovery mission. We've figured out a way for many, many people to build something together so complicated, no one person can understand it, but it all has to work together perfectly for decades without fail. Just the fact that these things work at all is a thrill. It's just a testament to a lot of the engineers at JPL and the companies that we collaborate with uh, that they can build these things. It's exciting for me to be able to be a woman winning and leading a deep space mission. The only previous woman who competed, won, and led a deep space mission was uh, Maria Zuber, who was my friend and mentor at MIT. And so my drive is to make everyone feel welcome and to have every voice heard. We want as many undergraduates as we can. We want to involve as much of the public as we can. We want people to feel like this is their mission. You get that first picture back, and you know, one of the first things that goes through your mind is, oh, thank God I didn't leave the lens cap on. We will put our pictures out there as soon as they come down. So we'll discover at the same time that the public discovers. We'll be scratching our heads and saying, like, I, I don't know what's going on. At the same time, everybody else is like, wow, that, what is that? I don't know, let's figure it out. 
I did get to look at Psyche through an optical telescope in my backyard. Some wonderful colleagues brought over their telescope on a fortuitous night. It's a very, very tiny faint dot. And that made a bunch of us cry to think that we could send something to investigate that speck of light. We can understand this universe that we live in. We can explore it, we can learn about it, and we can be a part of something which is much bigger than just us or just this planet. We will see new things when we visit a world made of metal. Thank you for letting me introduce you to the team. The people that you saw on that video are the people that I work with every day on this mission. And then there are about 890 more beyond them. It's a big team, but it's all about the team. And so I get to stand here and represent, but I wanted to make sure you all know the kinds of people that we have working. There's a place for everyone in space exploration. And so I want to ask us, why do we explore? For centuries, the story of exploration was a story of economic advancement. It was a story of great pain to indigenous peoples. It was a story of enrichment of only the few. I know I don't need to tell the people of Chile about the legacy of that kind of exploration. But what we're doing today is we're trying to change the story of exploration. We're trying to change the narrative. So let's step through a little bit of exploration, and then I can explain to you what I mean. So first, Antarctica, discovered in the early 1800s. Did you know that before Antarctica was sighted and before it was really explored, there were people who believed that there were holes in the poles of our Earth, that the North and the South Pole were empty holes issuing peoples and animals from the center of our Earth? So this was a place where no human had ever seen, where we did not know what Antarctica was until we went. And it opened up the age of exploration. Here is the painting by one of the people on the Beagle when they came to Ushaya. We know that this did not work well for the people of Ushaya. Many misunderstandings, many false steps, but again, we can now do better. We know more, we can do better. People began to explore for not just business and not just economics, but for to be a hero, to learn amazing things, to be the most powerful country, the most exploring country, the bravest country. This is a photograph of Roald Amundsen's tent that he left at the South Pole. And when the Scott expedition got there, they discovered his tent and knew that they had not won the race. That is how they found out that they did not get to the South Pole first. Look at Scott's the way he's standing. Look at the way Evans is standing. These are people who are in despair. But again, we can change this narrative. Exploration doesn't have to be about that. We're now in the information age. We're in an age where we've gone out into space to explore rocky bodies like the moon. This is the Orientale Basin. It's on the limb of the moon. We can't see it from the Earth. We can only see it because we spent sent spacecraft there. These things are to inspire all of us. These are things that we all get to participate in. And I urge you all to have a favorite giant impact basin on the moon. I think Orientale is a good one. You could select that if you don't have a favorite basin. It's a really good one. This is Burns Cliff on Mars. It's named from a man I knew, a scientist, Roger Burns. There we are, these robot proxies for humans looking at this rock on another planet. It's like a miracle. It's amazing that we as a species can do this. We've visited, besides the rocky worlds, we've visited worlds made of gas and ice. This is the great red spot on Jupiter taken by the Juno spacecraft. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't fluid flow amazing? This is the moon Europa. Many of you probably know that this is one of the places in the solar system we think it's most likely that we will find life, life that is not from the Earth. So inspiring to go and search. Are we alone? Let's go find out. And then there's Psyche. I think you can't even see it, but there is a little dot in there. And that is the picture from the night when I saw it with my eye through the telescope. We think Psyche is mostly made of metal. Why is this interesting? Because we as humans have an innate desire to explore. It's in our DNA. And so now we have a chance to make exploration for everyone. Exploration that can inspire everyone on Earth to do something bolder in their own lives. Let's go see one of the last kinds of objects that has never been seen by humans. Antarctica was one of those places on Earth. 
Psyche is one of those places in space. And so here is this beautiful country, and this is how large Psyche is, so that you have a scale. It's a very big asteroid, actually. It's very big. We don't know what impacts into metal look like. We do not know what the surface of Psyche looks like. There's never been a picture made by a human being of a metal surface. Look at how the ejecta flaps, those pieces that are thrown up by the impact, this is just a little tiny impact in a laboratory, of course. Look how they have uh, frozen, standing up straight. That doesn't happen when you make an impact into rock or an impact into ice. You can know that by looking at the moon, that that doesn't happen. Would it happen on Psyche? What will Psyche look like? We literally don't know, no one knows. It could be made of this. This is a kind of a meteorite called a palisite. The iron nickel metal is gray, and here the gold color is, is the mineral peridot. It's a gem. And uh, so these palisites fall to the earth from somewhere in space. Some of them might come from Psyche. Psyche could look like that. Again, we don't know. And so to me, the purpose of space exploration, the reason that we do space exploration is first of all because we can't help ourselves. We always need to go see what is there. But when you think of the difficulty of building this spacecraft, now we've been working on this since 2011, and we've started building space hardware this last year. We'll launch in 2022. To make something that takes 900 people to put together, that as I said in the video, that no one of us understands how the whole thing works, and yet, together, we can make something that works. To me, that's not a metaphor, it's the truth. It's what we can do as humans. And if we can do something so bold and inspiring here, then imagine what we can do here on Earth with our abilities. And so to me, a large part of space exploration is to give us the positive narrative. We can think of ourselves as the species we should be. We can transcend where we are. We can imagine the world that we need to live in. We can be bolder and we can be better in our own lives as we imagine going out into space. So many of the narratives we have today are fearful narratives. There are scary things happening in our world and we need to stand up and make change. And by imagining ourselves as the humans that we can be, exploring our solar system and doing these amazing impossible feats, then I'm sure that you can feel as convinced, if you don't already as I do, that we can fix our problems here on Earth, and we can make the world that we want. And so I invite you all to go on the journey to Psyche with us. We'll be sharing our information the minute we get it, because space exploration is for all of us. Thank you very much.